Got the engine uh, almost completely dissected here. So this is the 6.4, the 392. Um, I knew already from when I took the head off that a piston was destroyed. So you can see that. Interesting thing is that the piston, I thought this had spun a bearing or worse and caused the piston to hit the head and shatter the piston. But this rod bearing, I mean, it's got some wear in it, but it wasn't spun and it really wasn't that bad. So that would have been great news had uh, there not been another issue. So on this piston, we get a broken rod cap. I have never seen that before. Um, it's not like I've rebuilt thousands of bottom ends or anything, or even hundreds, but I've never seen anybody break a rod cap. I don't know how that happened. Uh, so of course, because of that, this crankshaft is uh, toast. This is the, this is the, the um, journal that that shattered piston came off of, which is like totally fine. So that one journal here is is crap. I mean, there's, there's a good lip here. I don't even think you could turn this down and, and fix it. Um, on top of that, there was a lot of crap that came out of here. Um, all those piston fragments, they ended up down here and they got churned and um, there's broken teeth on the reluctor wheel isn't a big deal I and mean, you can change that but but there's a whole bunch missing it actually took a small chunk out of the bottom of the cylinder which isn't a big deal the piston um, rings don't come down that far this block is still salvageable it could definitely be used uh, the piston that got shattered does have a it does have a gouge taken out of it It's kind of hard to sorry for the crappy video guys but right here um, I, I think that this could be bored out and still be okay um, so the issue I had was that with the crank being junk the block being uh, questionable definitely would need pistons and rods uh, the cost on that stuff adds up quick and so if I was to do just stock stuff, it would be like the same amount of money to get a stroker kit. Now, I was leaning heavily towards a 426 stroker kit just because I love the idea of, you know, badging the side of the car as a 426 Hemi. Um, just be really cool to have the 426. But I would be pushing the limitations of an all-wheel drive drivetrain in a charger and so that felt like a waste of money to me to to put all that money in um probably three thousand dollars or so i could have this engine i could build it make a 426 out of it and have it running for probably around three grand but like i said what did i really do i put too much engine in an all-wheel drive charger um, and at the end of the day, I probably am going to sell this car. You'll notice in every video I make that I'm always saying, oh, well, not sure if I'm going to sell this one or not, but I always sell them. <laughs> um, so if I'm going to sell it anyways, there's no point in doing all that to it because I'm not going to get that money back out of it. So off to Copart. Beautiful day in New England. I am at Copart in Candia, New Hampshire. Currently looking for a car that should have a good engine in it for the Charger project. So, just looking for that now. It's a 2010 Charger. Doesn't have a ton of damage. Has a pretty buy, pretty low buy it now price on it. So we're gonna check that out. If I can find it. All right, I found it. This is it. It's 
It's got a buy it now price of like fifteen fifty, I think. I bid on it on Tuesday. I was the winning bid at five hundred, but they rejected my offer. It's not wrecked because of a whole lot wrong with it, really. It's just this uh, damage here. But I really don't care because I don't care about the car. All I want is the engine. So let's see if it actually starts. is in it it is leather it does have heated seats I don't know if these seats would really work in the 13 or not I mean yeah 2011 I have or not but and the battery's dead damn it knew I should have brought a booster <laughs> maybe somebody will let me use one All right, let me get the hood cleared off of snow and get it open and check it out. All right, well, I didn't capture it on video, but had a guy come and uh, jump start the car for me. Started right up. Engine sounds fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this car. This seems like it'd be a perfect transplant for the 2011 Charger at home. So I'm just going to go pay them and... Uh, do the buy it now at fifteen fifty. Get it home and get that other charger done. And here we have the donor car. This is just a the two thousand ten charger. Let's go ahead and start it up. I know at Copart it didn't start. There was no battery in it, but a guy came over and jumped it for me, and it started right up. Sounded great. Let's see if it still sounds great. Sounds good. Amazingly, aside from like a, a flash and brake light, which I don't care about, there's not even any lights on the dash. So no check engine light. I think this is going to work out really well. So you can see even though this is a 2010, the body style is one generation different. It switched over to, uh, in 2011, it has like the indents in the, the doors and the hood is different. The interiors are completely different. But the engine's the same. Actually, everything under the hood looks to be exactly the same i'm hoping that because this isn't an, an eagle engine it's at the eagle heads that the reluctor wheel on the crank has the same amount of teeth i guess in different generations they changed that i don't think there's a difference between a uh, 2010 and 2011 so this should be a really straightforward swap so i'm just going to uh basically yank this whole engine out drop it in the charger and the charger will be just about done uh, one of the great things about this is that both front axles on the charger up back or on the uh the 2011 charger both front axles were pretty much junk at least ripped boots or came apart as i took them out uh, so if these axles are good that saves me a little bit there uh, i needed an alternator this has a good alternator um yeah this should be a I should have literally everything I need. So it should be easy from here. So now I have my donor car. I've got everything I need. Uh, that's in my father's garage. His, we're neighbors and his garage is, you know, a few hundred feet away from mine. Um, one thing I'm really struggling with. Now, again, like I said, I'm not going to keep this car. Most likely. High possibility I'm just going to sell it. Make a few bucks, buy something else. Um, but what I'm struggling with is I've got a 6.4 intake just sitting there. 
I've got the box, the MSD, uh, it's a, what's it called? Digital window switch. Basically that is already wired up to control the valve that's in the intake to open and close depending on the RPMs. That's already set. Um, I've already got a set of headers over here that came off this. And it's got um, catless mid pipes. So it's like, man, I could, I could throw all that stuff on my donor Hemi and it would sound mean. And I'd have, you know, especially if I tuned it, I could have probably an extra 40 to 50 horsepower. You know, just from those mods and um, tuning it. But, again, if I'm just going to sell the car and the car's got 180,000 miles on it, did I really get my money back on those parts or would the car be just as valuable, if not more valuable, if it was stock? So I think I'm going to keep it stock. Another thing. So I, I also I have all these parts. So I could probably sell that intake. Those heads are worth quite a bit of money. Um, one needs a valve, and that's it. It's got one cut valve. Uh, right here. That's from the piston that, that shattered. I'm pretty certain it's just that valve, and that's it. But, you know, I'd inspect the valve seat and everything, make sure everything's good. But I've seen those listed for as much as $1,000 for one for one Apache head on eBay. So anywhere from 500 to 1,000. Probably ask like 300 for the, uh, the one that needs a valve and maybe, I don't know, 600 for the other one. I don't know what the intake's worth, but that's worth a few bucks. Um, I also, I've got all these non-MSD lifters. Um, I gotta bag all this stuff up, clean it all up before I, before I bring the other engine in, but but yeah, I've got, you know, probably $2,000 worth of parts sitting here at least. And I paid $1,800 for the car. And so, yeah, I'd be in pretty good shape. So one thing I failed to mention on the Copart part of the video. So you saw me in the Copart yard and I said, I'm just going to go buy the car. It has a buy it now price on it. I'm just going to buy it. Well, that was my first ever Copart transaction. And I had no idea how expensive it was in fees. So I have to go through a broker because I'm not a dealer. Um, I already was signed up for a broker. I, I used uh, Auto Bid Master and uh, they, they're great. What's really cool about it is that basically the broker website wraps the Copart website in their own broker way. And so it looks just like Copart, except for like a little bit in the top header and some stuff in the bottom. But aside from that, it looks just like you're on the Copart website. It works the same way. Uh, most everything's the same. So it's really cool. Well, I had bid that car up to $500 before, and I was declined on the offer. And so I figured, I think it was $1,550 was a buy it now price. And after I heard it run... And after searching for 5.7 Hemis that found out they're way more expensive than I thought a used one would be, I decided 1550 plus, you know, a few hundred dollars in, in fees would be worth it. And so I was going to buy it right then. Well, a couple things. For one, I went and I told them I want to buy it right now. And they said, you can't buy it unless you're a dealer. And I was like, okay. Um, and they had told me that even if I bought it on the website, um, through my broker that I wouldn't be able to take the car. It, you have to be a licensed dealer just to take the car off the lot. And so that kind of sucked. Well, I went out to my truck right there in the parking lot. I was going to do the buy it now when I looked at how expensive that was going to be. So like I said, it was going to be $15.50 for the car. Well, after all the fees and everything, it was going to be just over $2,600. So it was going to add at least $1,100 to the price of the car um, in fees. And I just thought that was too much. You know, I can almost buy a non-totaled uh, 
a non-totaled Hemi car for that price. Uh, they are pretty hard to find, but you know, $2,600, you're starting to talk real money um, for a totaled car. And so they have a make and offer thing. So I did that. I offered 800. And the broker actually texted me and said that the, the client was firm at 1550 and the best thing to do was to buy it now. Well, I already decided I didn't want to do that because it was just too much money. Well, the other thing I didn't know was that when you click the make an offer, you're making a bid. You're setting your max bid. It's not just an offer. And so that was kind of frustrating because I didn't, I didn't really want, this was like four days before the next auction, the next auction. And I didn't really want to be tied up on that car. Like what if I found something else in between now and then, you know, I'm, I'm held to that $800 bid on that car. Plus that's just the $800 bid, not including all the fees and everything and get it out of there. So auction day comes. Oh, the other thing about that too, is that at the level I am or was, um, as a member, I can only bid it on one car at a time. So I have a bid outstanding on a car. It means I can't bid on other cars. I ended up upgrading that just before because I had my eyes on another car. So auction day comes just before the auction goes live. My $800 bid gets outbid to $825. And I figure, okay, well, I'm probably not going to win it. I kind of set my cap at a thousand bucks. That means I'd be able to get it off the lot for about two grand after all the fees. Well, I decided I'd bid on it. I bid it once and nobody else bid. So I got it for 850. After all the fees and everything, it was um, $1,726. And the thing, other thing that's interesting is that I was able to go on to get an app called uh, Copart Transporter. And I was able to fill out all the information on there um, and sign up and become a member through there. And then I was able to go to Copart and pick up the car myself, which was super easy. Uh, they dropped it right on the trailer for me. It was awesome. So anyways, long story, but I got the car for $1,726. And this car I have for $1,800. And so I have basically both of them together for less than thirty six hundred dollars. I should be able to get them both run. I should be able to get this this one, the two thousand eleven, running and ready for the road for right around thirty six hundred dollars. So, all in all, pretty good deal. Um, the next video, I think I'm gonna pause at this point, um, and then the next video I will show the whole transaction transplant one one engine out into the other one um, probably won't go into detail on that you've seen a million of these hemis go in and out and i've already shown a little bit about taking this one out but that's what we're gonna do thanks for watching